Although we often think of bacteria, viruses, and fungi as inherently bad, they're actually an incredibly important part of our health. Our bodies are home to trillions of microbes, many of which reside in our gastrointestinal tract. These microbes perform a variety of important functions, and not having them can actually be bad for your health. Let's discuss what these microbes are, why they're important, and what you can do to improve your gut health. Here's everything I've learned about the gut microbiome. What's going on guys? For those of you who are new here, my name is Kevin Jabal, physician entrepreneur based in Las Vegas, formerly in plastic surgery. Let's start with what is the gut microbiome. Now humans have evolved to live with microbes for millions of years. So much so in fact, that our bodies contain roughly the same number of bacterial cells as they do human cells. And although it may seem like a one-sided relationship where we just tolerate living with bacteria in our bodies, this isn't actually the case. The bacteria and microbes in our gut, collectively referred to as the gut microbiome, perform a variety of important functions from regulating digestion and metabolism to even influencing our immune system and our behavior. Let's break down each of these functions. First, digestion and metabolism. To start, our gut microbiome allows us to break down food that we would otherwise be unable to. We all know that fiber is an important part of a healthy diet. It helps regulate our blood sugar and cholesterol, and helps waste move smoothly through our digestive system. But another important reason you need to get enough fiber in your diet is that bacteria in the gut ferment that fiber and use it to help create important biomolecules that we can't create ourselves. So here are some examples of biomolecules that our gut microbiome makes for us. Vitamin B12, and this plays a role in the formation of red blood cells and DNA. It's also involved in the function and development of brain and nerve cells. Vitamin K, this is used to make various proteins needed for blood clotting and building healthy bone tissue. In fact, the popular blood thinner warfarin blocks the function of vitamin K in order to prevent clotting. And then there's also essential amino acids, which are the ones that we need, but we can't create ourselves and we need to get from our diet. And these are leucine, phenylalanine, isoleucine, and valine. Without our gut microbiome, we wouldn't be able to fully utilize the food that we consume and wouldn't be able to create many of the important biomolecules that we need in order to stay healthy. In addition, our gut microbiome has been shown to play a role in our metabolism. There are certain changes in our gut microbiome that have been associated with some chronic metabolic health issues like obesity, insulin resistance, and diabetes. Although intuitively, it makes sense that bacteria and other microorganisms in your gut would be involved with digestion and metabolism, the gut microbiome plays other important roles, one of which is the protection against disease. It accomplishes this in two ways. First, by protecting against other more harmful bacteria. There's a finite amount of space in our gut and a finite amount of nutrients. Bacteria and other microorganisms are constantly competing with one another for survival. By having well-established populations of good microbes that benefit our health, we prevent the pathogenic organisms from taking up residence in our bodies and multiplying. Secondly, some bacteria and microorganisms in our gut also have the ability to impact the immune system. And a large portion of our immune system is actually located in the gut. Although some microorganisms, such as H. pylori, have been associated with increased risks of gastric and colorectal cancer, other types of bacteria may actually help our immune system eliminate cancer cells. Now, research on the role of the gut microbiome in cancer prevention is still in its infancy, However, microbes in the gut are thought to interact with the host immune system and enhance its ability to eliminate cancer cells and other pathogens. Although more research needs to be done, we may see the gut microbiome play a greater role in our understanding of cancer prevention, progression, and treatment. There's also a growing body of literature regarding the gut microbiome and mental health. Much like how a large portion of our immune system is contained in our gut, a large portion of our nervous system is also contained in the gut. There's a complex network of nerves, neurons, neurotransmitters all along the digestive tract, which we refer to as the enteric nervous system, that communicates with the central nervous system. And as a result, there's a lot of crosstalk between the gut and the brain. So much so, in fact, that the enteric nervous system is often referred to as our second brain. This observation has prompted a large amount of research looking into the relationship between the gut and mental health, and there's a growing body of research that suggests a bi-directional relationship between the two. So in short, our mental health impacts our gut health, and our gut health impacts our mental health. Research suggests that that patients with mood disorders often show changes in their gut microbiome. In addition, in animal models, researchers have been able to transplant a healthy gut microbiome into rats that are demonstrating depression-like behaviors and yield significant improvements in their depression-like behavior. Now this is really cool because the phenomenon also works in the opposite direction. So when they transplant the microbiome of a depressed rat into a healthy rat, the previously healthy rat begins to develop depression-like behavior. Preliminary research into fecal microbiota transplant in humans 
has shown strong evidence for the treatment and transmission of psychiatric illnesses. Although, of course, more research must be done. Now, let's dive into the various factors that influence our gut microbiome. First, perhaps the most obvious factor, of course, is diet. From the moment we're born, what we eat plays a significant role in the health of our gut microbiome. Even as infants, whether you are bottle versus breastfed can significantly impact your gut microbiome. Diets that are rich in fruits and vegetables are associated with healthier and more diverse gut microbiomes. On the other hand, diets that are high in processed sugars and low in fruits and vegetables like of course the standard American diet, have been associated with lower microbiome diversity. But maintaining a healthy diet rich in fruits, vegetables, and fiber can be difficult. What I found helpful is building systems to help hold me accountable. That's where the sponsor of today's video, Levels, comes in. Levels provides a continuous glucose monitor, or CGM, that allows you to track your blood sugar in real time. Unlike the conventional method where you have to prick your finger each and every time, and it only gives you a single snapshot, Level tracks your blood sugar automatically and lets you see exactly how it changes throughout the day. It provides me with real-time insights into how my diet and lifestyle affect my blood sugar and helps hold me accountable. If I get sloppy with my diet or don't get enough sleep, I can see it reflected in my blood sugar and it motivates me to get back on track. The old thinking was that CGMs are only for diabetics, but Levels is bringing the technology to the masses. I've actually had one on my arm almost every day for more than one year now, and it's just because I find it that valuable. Levels has been a longtime partner of this channel, and there's a reason I continue to use them and promote them to this day. To learn more about Levels, click the link here or down in the description below. Lifestyle factors can also influence the health of your gut microbiome. Let's start with stress. When you're stressed, your body releases various stress hormones, which can cause inflammation and influence other autonomic functions. And this stress response impacts your gut microbiome and can cause some gut bacteria to release metabolites, toxins, and other neurohormones, which can affect your behavior and your mood. Second is alcohol. Now, alcoholism has been linked to gut microbiome dysbiosis and negatively impacts the health of your gut. Smoking has also been demonstrated to negatively affect the gut microbiome. Environmental factors can also impact the health of your gut microbiome. Exposure to air pollution, heavy metals in food and water, and pesticides can all negatively impact the health of your gut microbiome. One environmental exposure that is particularly relevant in medicine, however, is of course antibiotics. Now, while antibiotics are of course essential to treat various infections, they don't just affect bacteria that cause disease. They also wreak havoc on the good bacteria of the gut microbiome, which can put you at risk for other issues. For example, C. diff infections. With the healthy bacteria killed off, C. diff can proliferate and cause explosive issues. This is why you should only take antibiotics when you need them, and why so many doctors push back against patients who have a cold, a flu, some viral URI, and they want antibiotics thinking that it's gonna help them when it's a virus instead, because taking antibiotics when you don't need them can actually be detrimental to you. All right, so how to improve one's gut health. Although we can't control every factor that influences our gut health, there are many things that we can control. Of course, this is not medical advice, this is for informational purposes only, and you should always consult your physician before making any kind of diet or lifestyle changes. So first, let's start with diet. You wanna eat a diet that's rich in fruits and vegetables that will provide your gut with the fiber and nutrients that it needs. Variety and being unprocessed are really key here. Food that promotes the growth of healthy bacteria in the gut are called prebiotics. These are mainly foods with fiber and complex carbs that human cells can't digest, but the healthy gut bacteria can. By consistently eating high quality healthy food, you influence the types of bacteria in your gut. Avoid those highly processed foods that are rich in sugar and fat because these can lead to an overgrowth of the bad bacteria in your gut. Probiotics, not to be confused with prebiotics, are your direct source of good bacteria. These are foods or supplements that contain live bacteria and yeast that are good for your gut. Examples include fermented foods like yogurt, kimchi, and kombucha. And when it comes to lifestyle, the two main factors are number one, minimize stress, and we talk about stress in other videos, and of course, not smoking and minimizing any drinking. There are no quick fixes for improving your gut health. It's something that you must consistently work at to maintain. It's all about building the healthy habits and systems to help hold yourself accountable so that you can do the right thing with less friction. It just becomes easy. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, then check out How Modern Medicine Failed Me or What Chronic Illness Taught Me About Life. And thanks again to Levels for sponsoring this video. Much love, and I'll see you guys in that next one.